Welcome, today I'm going to talk to you about cells and batteries in general. How do these guys work? That's the, that's the essence of the topic today. Well, let's begin with something more familiar to us. Let's begin with a capacitor. So imagine I take a charged capacitor and I hook it up against a resistor. What's going to happen? Well, we know that this plate is positively charged and this plate is negatively charged and positive and negative attract each other. Therefore, the negative charges are the electrons over here, so let's, let's take this, this electron over here is going to move from here all the way back and try to cancel this positive charge. Now of course, that's what's going to happen because electrons are the ones that move, but remember we love positive charges, we always like to think in terms of positive charges, so it's equivalent to say that a positive charge is the one that's moving like this and then is going and cancelling out that negative charge. And so whatever it is, we are now going to have a current in this particular circuit and that current is going to be in this direction. So let's see, that current is going to be in this direction over here. So that current is going to be I. But here's something to notice. You see, as the charges are moving from here to here, oops, as the charges are moving like this, they are cancelling out, right? So this can so once a positive charge moves there, that but that positive charge is gone, and that negative charge is gone as well. And because of this, now what's going to happen to our potential difference over here? If the potential difference over here in the beginning was 10 volts, let's say that was the initial potential difference. Notice that as time passes by, this potential potential difference is going to drop. That potential difference is actually going to decrease. And if the potential difference decreases, then this current in the circuit is also going to decrease. So charges will keep moving, it's going to keep cancelling out with this one, the current will keep decreasing, the voltage across the capacitor keeps decreasing, eventually the capacitor completely discharges and eventually we'll get the voltage to be zero and the current eventually becomes zero amperes and everything stops. So we could make a plot. If you made a plot of let's say current over here versus time. And let's say at time t is equal to zero there was a switch over here and we just closed that switch. Then initially the voltage was very high. In our example it was 10 volts. And um, let's say the resistance was let's say 2 ohms. So if we apply Ohm's law, initially the current must have been 10 divided by 2 which is 5 amperes. That, that must have been the initial value of the current. So let me mark that with point over here. This would have been the initial value of the current, 5 amperes. But then as time passes by, the current actually starts dropping. And we will, we will discuss this later in much detail how, how the current drops exponentially and everything. But eventually if you wait long enough, the current eventually dies out and becomes zero. But you know what? Cells are different. Batteries don't work that way. If you were to take a battery and hook it up to a resistor, and suppose for simplicity, let's say the battery also had a potential difference of let's say 10 volts over here. Then if we have the same resistor, we would have the same initial current. The initial current would be 5 amperes. But the difference is a battery can maintain the potential difference. So this thing is going to remain a constant. And we are going to consider this to be an ideal battery. An ideal battery is something that never exists in our universe, but it's, it's um, super easy to talk about and super easy to understand the concept. So we will start with an ideal battery. And then we will see in real batteries what are the complications and what are the difficulties. We will talk about all of that stuff later. But anyways, what is important is if I were to draw a graph of current versus time for this circuit, what we will find now is that the current not only starts at 5 amperes, but it is going to get maintained at 5 amperes. And that is the difference between a capacitor and a battery. So we can ask ourselves, what if we wanted the same thing to happen inside a capacitor? Just imagine, we wanted that in a capacitor. How, how, could we, how could we make a capacitor work like a battery? Because if you can answer that question, 
then we can understand the difference between a capacitor and a battery all right so what we will do is we'll get rid of this uncharged capacitor and we'll again bring in a newly charged capacitor over here a fully charged capacitor capacitor which is charged all the way to 10 volts let's say there we have it and let's get rid of all these zeros all right so here's our question the moment I close the switch if I want to maintain that current meaning I want to maintain this potential difference what should happen well let's see what should happen so here's a here's a here's a charge so this charge is moving it's moving it's moving it's moving and it's going to now cancel out over here unless if inside the capacitor this charge could move back because notice if this charge could move back then the capacitor will come back to its original charge and the potential difference is going to get maintained and then what's going to happen is this charge is again going to keep flowing and it's going to flow over here but it won't stop there again the charge is going to get moved back but you could ask who is going to move the charge from positive to negative from from this negative terminal to the positive terminal and that would be an excellent question and notice something very important over here so let me use blue to denote something very important you see because there's a potential difference because there's a potential difference this is the positive terminal there is an electric field set up over here yeah, there's an electric field that runs in this direction okay and the electric field is not only set up inside the resistor but the electric field is also set up inside a capacitor there is an electric field in the same direction from the positive terminal of the battery of the capacitor to the negative terminal of the capacitor so when we want when we say that we want our positive charge to move all the way back and then get get go and, and then move all the way back to the to the positive terminal we are expecting that positive charge to move against the electric field and guess what positive charges don't like to move automatically against the electric field someone must push it so there must be some sort of a pumping mechanism inside so we need to add a pump to our capacitor that's what we need to do so in order to make sure this thing works like a battery to make sure this thing works like a battery all we need to do is add a pump so if we have a capacitor let's say we have a capacitor with some sort of a pump mechanism a pump mechanism to make sure that the charges get pumped back like I've shown you and make sure the charges don't get lost so the net charge on each plate remains the same then this capacitor with the pump acts like a battery notice that I'm saying it acts like a battery because in reality batteries don't work that way you don't in reality capacitors are not batteries are not really capacitors with pump but it's, it's super important it's super useful to think of it that way because it it becomes easier to conceptualize that way so really inside a battery there is some sort of a pump mechanism going on charges positive charges are actually being pumped you know, the positive charges are being pumped from the negative terminal of the battery so this is a negative terminal I hope you know that I forgot to mention that here's a negative terminal the positive charges are being pumped from the negative terminal back to the positive terminal once they get pumped over here they fall back and then they get pumped again and they fall back and therefore this battery ends up doing work okay now here's the question how much work does the battery do well that depends upon the voltage of the battery I like to remind you I would like to remind you we define voltage or the potential difference let's write that down over here we define potential difference so if you have two points a and B I would like to remind you that the potential difference Delta V is defined as the work done per coulomb okay so work done per charge so this is work done in moving a coulomb in moving a coulomb from 
negative potential to positive potential meaning from lower potential to higher potential and that could be anyone so for example b could be the lower potential and a could be the higher potential and if you are moving moving a coulomb so let's say here's our charge and if you are moving a coulomb and let's say in moving a coulomb you end up doing 10 joules of work then by definition delta v is going to be 10 volt that's the definition of voltage or potential difference so this tells us something about a battery see our battery is able to maintain constantly 10 volts of potential difference across its terminals so this is telling us something this is telling us that our battery is successful in doing 10 joules of work in moving a coulomb from the negative terminal to the positive terminal so let me let me write that down so let me redraw that battery here's that zoomed in version of that battery here's a big battery and this is our positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal of the battery and what i'm saying is that in transferring charges from negative to positive eventually when it ends up transferring one coulomb of charge in negative to positive our battery is going to do a work of 10 joules and that's why the potential difference over here is maintained to be 10 volt and this work done by the battery in moving a coulomb from its negative potential or negative terminal to the positive terminal is called as the electromotive force of our battery so that is what we call as the emf of a cell and that is a characteristic feature of a cell so we define emf of a cell as the work done by a cell in moving a coulomb a coulomb of charge from its negative terminal its negative terminal to the positive terminal that's the definition of the emf and every single time you have seen the voltage readings on a battery it's actually the emf so tomorrow if you take a battery and you, you look at a duracell battery maybe and if you read that battery is 9 volt and if this is the positive and this is the negative what it means is this battery is capable of doing of, of pumping uh, of, of pumping charges from this negative terminal to positive terminal and when it pumps a coulomb of charge from negative to positive it ends up doing 9 joules of work so that's the idea behind a battery i hope i gave you some sort of an intuition behind what a battery is what's the difference between that and a capacitor and we introduced one very important term called as the emf of a cell okay so we're going to talk more about cells and we're going to talk more about practical cells and how they are different from idealized cells as we studied over here in the next class uh, in, the, in the next episode so stay tuned